guys, welcome back. I've just finished off fixing the ATS EXB after its BMX Trax bash. And guys, it was an awesome bash, but we ended up breaking the front arm. So I just had to replace that front arm, which is quite straightforward. Uh, but guys, I come across another problem on the day. And unfortunately, I didn't have the time to look for this part that I did lose. So guys, I just want to quickly share that with you. And I also want to share with you how I'm going to hopefully repair it. So there you go, guys, you can see. I've lost my power button for the ESE guys, um, which isn't a good idea because that power button is also making this ESE button uh, waterproof as well guys. So we don't want to be running without a power button. Now I did go online to see if there was anything else available that I could put on there and hopefully resolve it um, or get a replacement button. Unfortunately, I don't, I can't get hold of a replacement button. So I'm going to have to try and repair this thing guys. Uh, and I don't really want to go ahead and replace the ESE yet. The ESE has still been perfectly fine for me and I've had a lot of fun with this ESE. So anyway guys, um, I want to quickly share with you. I haven't seen anyone else do anything, any kind of video on how to repair this. If it is repairable or not. So guys, this is what I'm going to use to repair it. I've already gone ahead and split this remote open. And this is what we're interested in guys. These are the buttons. And if you look behind it, you can see... There is actually uh, somewhere designed for it to be able to press down on a button on a circuit board. So it's really good guys. Um, so the main issue that we have is the button has to be the right size to fit in this what hole. What I'm going to try and do is it'll be ideal if I can use this red one here. The actual on and off button for the remote guys. Um, and try and fit that into this space here. So guys, first thing is just to remove this button. Hold button down and just put that somewhere safe there are a couple of really small cross head screws on this thing holding it together which is really good so we have we are able to open this button up and have access to these this space here so guys um, quickly open that up now it is a really small cross head screwdriver that you're gonna need so I've got this here which is the right size and just be careful we don't lose these screws they're going to be tiny so there's one I'm going to put that to the side just to get the other one out and there's the other one there so hopefully this should now be able to split open yeah just be gentle we don't want to break anything so there you go guys um so you've got two buttons on here one's a set button to program your esc and the other one's a power on and off so you can see there the set button is still in its place, but the power button is missing. So guys, what I want to do, as I said, is remove the um, power on and off button. And it'll be a case of me using a pair of scissors and to trim any of this excess rubber. Um, so I can fit it into this space. There's only a certain amount of space that is available. And also we've got to check whether this button will fit and you can see fits without it perfectly actually so that's quite lucky so guys this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to hope that it works we're just going to use a pair of scissors and I'm hoping we don't take too much away probably a couple of mil wider than the button because we are going to trim it so so far this is how much we've got so let's trim it a little bit more 
Let's give it a quick test and see if it fits and how well it fits. So, not too bad. Um, I think we might just try it at that and see if that's enough, guys. Uh, but you can see on the set button, the whole button moves forward and backwards. Um, but with this new button, guys, just the center should hopefully move. The rest of it should stay put and hopefully seal it up. So I don't have any issues with any water getting in there. So I'm just going to quickly put it together and better get some batteries in, in the car and just test it as well. See if it will go together. Uh, it does. Put the screws back in. Just be careful we don't lose any screws. Let's see if this fix works. Alright, so I'm pressing both buttons, guys, and the sound really good. So it's just a case of putting the screw back in. Give you back a touch. Okay. Does feel right. Um, so guys, what I'm going to do is just going to get some batteries into it. Um, we're just going to quickly test that button and make. All right, guys, batteries are in. Let's turn the remote on. Oh wow! Just make sure. All right, it's all working. And guys, check it out. Because I used a red button. Don't know how well you can see that. But the button itself is lit as well, so that's really good. I've still got um, this light on there. Just gonna quickly turn it off because that fan is a bit noisy. Uh, I do have some replacement fans. They're a 35 millimeter, I think. I'll have to check or it might be a 30 millimeter fan in there. Um, I do have some replacement fans, so I can replace that fan. Uh, but for now, guys, I was more concerned about replacing this button. And guys, that button seems to have worked really well. Um, I hope it's gonna stay in there. But what I'm going to do is, guys, I'm going to keep hold of this. So this is what's left of the, the button pad of the remote, guys. And there's a good few more buttons, round buttons there, probably around about the same sort of size. And it's just perfect the size I had chosen for it for replacement. So, guys, really happy about that. So I said that was a quick video just to share with you uh, this little problem that I had and how I managed to hopefully resolve it. And we will know when we get this thing out again. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful, useful and informative. If you did, make sure you hit the like. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do. Till the next time. See ya.